Thank you so much for that. Uh, since I would be first, that means I get to have the maximum amount of time. <laughs> it is a matter of great pleasure for me to be standing amongst uh, this audience this afternoon. And um, it is particularly um, a great privilege because this is the first time I'm talking to people who are actually uh, practitioners um, and in such a different field. Most of my work uh, relates to nuclear weapons, arms control, and weapon systems development. So nuclear power is perhaps a little bit different. Uh, nonetheless, I'll try my best in order to give um, an overview in terms of how Pakistan views nuclear energy and what are the prospects of nuclear energy and uh, coal and gas um, in Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan is one of the few countries um, in South Asia which have got uh, almost 10 to 12 percent increase in its energy demand which has happened very recently. We have had to face the energy security um, problem much more rapidly than any other country in South Asia considering the fact that we did not anticipate a shortfall. We had assumed that the global oil prices would be within the framework of operations for Pakistan and most importantly they would not create a surge in demand for energy. Nonetheless the energy demand as um, at this moment is around 10 to 12 percent per annum and there is a growing um, a gap between Pakistan's energy needs and domestic production. It is impacted because of the factors which we have seen in our region, most importantly Afghanistan, our commitment and also in the engagement in the Afghan war and that is also impacted in terms of how security situation in the region is impacted in terms of our ability to produce electricity, one, number two, have to have a focus on it, and number three, also to see as to what um, could have been done in order to create that uh, necessary gap. Nonetheless, the government's response has been much more stronger. Uh, there is an acute realization within the country that perhaps for Pakistan to get back on uh, this uh, road to success, perhaps energy needs to be a top priority. As such, 50,000 megawatts electricity has been set as a goal for Pakistan for 2050 energy plans. Nonetheless, there are two factors uh, which are impacting on that. One, the regional security situations, the prospects of the future um, energy grid, which could be coming from TAPI, as well from other energy grid. Number two is also the future of, the, uh, the future of, of energy prices, uh, and they are linked to the um, oil prices. Because Pakistan uh, is one of the few countries which out of uh, their 100% uh, electricity um, generation capacity, 72% of it comes uh, and is based on foreign oil prices and is based on foreign oil import uh, to Pakistan. That meant that with the global security situation altering, there has to be a rethink within the country in terms of having much more domestically reliable resources available for optimizing the transit as well as uh, different gas pipelines. So the question is what is the energy gap? And number two, can we live on renewables? Are there any potentials within the country um, to optimize that? What are the options for reducing consumption gap? Whether there would be a decrease in the production capacity in Pakistan or in that sense also the consumption pattern could be altered. And last but not least, what are the options for domestic production? The effects at this moment are the, to put it in economic terms, Pakistan has faced around $100 billion losses as a result of the war in Afghanistan and around 23% uh, of it has impacted on our energy uh, security plans. That means uh, that there is a direct link to security and energy when you see um, Pakistan's energy options. This is also impacted on Pakistan's industrial sector which is now struggling to meet its production demand primarily because of the fact that we did not uh, focus uh, on this one. And number two, the impact of uh, hidden costs in the energy sector are not looked at. Uh, that means the question of providing security, the, pro the question of providing insurance, and most importantly, the question of providing reliability to the energy mix which would be coming into the country. In short, what we're dealing with is market access being exhausted due to limited capacity to compete with the emerging and established economies. Nonetheless, our uh, energy requirements are continuing to increase. We are the sixth largest country in the world with its growing population to exceed 190 million by 2015. With rising population incomes per capita energy use and industrialization, this translates into a very high energy demand growth, with the total primary energy supply expected to triple or quadruple by 2025. 
and serious economic and development implications as energy deficit uh, grows for Pakistan, uh, there is uh, a thinking in terms of what would be the actual energy import cost with few medium-term solutions to supply shortfalls. So for Pakistan, why did we face with this, why did we find this acute energy crisis in the last five years is essentially because of the following reasons. Number one, lack of integrated energy planning and demand uh, or forecasting and absence of a central focus entity responsible for the energy sector. Like all other South Asian countries, for Pakistan this was one of the prime reasons. We did not have one uh, ministry uh, which was actually, or one sector which was actually leading the energy debate in the region. Uh, it was definitely there at the back of the security planners and the policy planners in Pakistan, but nonetheless it was not central uh, to the national security debate or for the national um, developmental goals. Number two, the imbalanced energy mix with heavy reliance of gas, that's around 47.5%, oil 30.5%, and the interesting fact is that 72% of it is imported. Non-utilization of vast indigenous resources of third coal and hydro potential in the country, and lack of effective project structuring, planning, and implementation of identified, identified and viable projects. In short, we were dealing with an inadequate primary energy sources or access to local availability and developmental practices, which would have allowed us to have a better energy basket and uh, also a better energy mix. Nonetheless, uh, just to give you a short purview as to what is existing in Pakistan at this moment and what is it that we are planning, uh, we are expected uh, to add uh, the following projects to Pakistan's uh, uh, existing uh, energy potential. That means at Nandipur around 425 megawatt thermal power reactor, at Gudu 800 megawatt thermal power reactor, Neelam Jhelum 1000 megawatt hydropower reactor, at Chashma which is already operating, uh, 1,200 megawatt reactors, which would be uh, leading up to another um, 1,800 megawatt reactors, which would be added to the Chashma side. And then we have the Ghadni project, <coughs> which is uh, a new project which has been launched by the government of Pakistan in order to convert this area into a power park. And uh, at this moment, only two Chinese companies have um, said that they would be operating around 660 megawatt uh, reactors, uh, which would be based on coal. Uh, coal power, uh, which uh, we hope that will allow for the uh, for a better energy mix. In short, <laughs> so uh, what are the other aspects which we are looking at when we are talking about Pakistan's program? Uh, mostly, uh, the main energy supplies. What are the trade-offs? Petroleum products adversely affected by the expanded electricity demand, and also uh, the increase in population. Uh, there is a 7% increase in Pakistan's annual uh, growth sector. That also means that this is not corresponding to the 12% increase in demand for electricity. Expanded thermal electricity and increased in coal production has strongly been associated with higher levels of thermal electricity. In short, infrastructure constraints mainly associated with thermal electricity are further impacting on this. The answer as to uh, what is Pakistan's solution? We are dealing with a solution outside the box. So there are three priorities which have been set forward. One, to increase the grid, uh, grid capacity of Pakistan. That means increasing the transmission lines and also the capacities in which we would be able to, uh, to build up uh, for the energy uh, dreams for Pakistan. That means both as a transit country and as a country which would be importing and perhaps dealing with the energy potential from Central Asia states as well as from Iran. Uh, by 2030 uh, and uh, in addition to that also to provide maximum optimization for the energy demand solutions available on ground at this moment. So at this moment Pakistan's energy deficit is around 4,000 to 5,000 megawatt. The price stability um, is the primary core concern. Uh, in 2009 the average price of electricity in Pakistan per unit was 5 rupees and which is now raised to around 22 rupees per unit. And within these last four years, you can see not only uh, the price increasing one-fold or twice, but it has gone five-fold uh, increase. That has impacted a lot in terms of how Pakistan's economic uh, development index um, could relate to it. This has also had uh, certain problems in terms of significant increase in hydro power generation and optimum use of coal through gasification. So three priority areas have been picked up. Uh, one is increasing the thermal base. Number two is to go for gas to cold uh, technologies and diffusion. 
and number three is of course nuclear power. A strategic priority has been given to nuclear electric energies, uh, energy and this, uh, the goal is that it should increase to 5%. Currently it sits around 3%. And uh, the primary energy demand will increase by more than six times from 55 MTOE in 2005 to 361 MTOE in 2013. That means that we need to increase the energy demand in Pakistan by a power of eight, uh, from 19,540 megawatts uh, to around uh, 1,063,000 megawatts. This is um, a pictorial map of what Pakistan's revised energy plan looks at. As you can see, the nuclear energy stands at 3%, renewable at 2%, oil at 10%, hydro at 20%, and gas at 35%. Currently, the mix is uh, that 72% is based on gas and oil, while um, nuclear energy is 3%, hydro is 10%, and coal is uh, almost non-existent, or less than 15%. We believe for the future, Pakistan's energy mix should look something like this, that is by, um, that it should have much and much more uh, role in terms of increasing, uh, decreasing the gas share and replacing it with a coal share. And that also means that there are bigger questions in terms of what kind of technologies would be required in order to ensure that there are not enough uh, CO2 emissions which would be uh, creating that effect. And gas diffusion technologies is perhaps uh, one of the major things which we are looking at. This is Pakistan's coal reserves. In Sindh, we are dealing with around uh, 185,000 million tons. Uh, in Punjab, it's 235. In Balochistan, 270 million tons. <coughs> and in NWFP or Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, around 90 million tons. Azad Kashmir, 90 million tons. In short, what you're looking at is Pakistan has got huge coal reserves. But the problem is the quality of the coal. And also the problem is that how do you ensure that you get economies of scale? That means that most of the projects uh, which we will have to uh, look at would have to be dealing with technologies which are based on gas diffusion technology. We have the world's single, single, single largest contiguous coal field extending over 10,000 square kilometers and the government is in the last uh, that this should be open for foreign investment as well as for the companies which would be coming in. All of Pakistan's energy requirements um, can be just met if this uh, resource can be tapped in. Uh, the common denominator within the country's energy uh, framework is, 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 is expected to call it the black gold to the people of Pakistan. Nonetheless, we do remain realistic, and that means that while coal might be the best option available in terms of the resource available within the country, nonetheless, there have to be some short-term solutions. And in the short-term solutions, that is where Pakistan has economies of scale. That is uh, the nuclear energy, which we believe should uh, be meeting the target of 8,800 megawatt by 2030. That means it will increase trifold uh, by 2050. Now, why uh, we would think that gas or nuclear would provide that? primarily because of the distribution networks which exist in Pakistan. At this moment, Pakistan has got 93% of its area which is uh, linked to different gas grids. So this means there would not be any additional gas uh, grids which would need to be added. That also means that our potential for future transit trade, maybe not in the next 10 years, but in the next 15 years would be pretty high. In terms of uh, the production um, gas pipelines, IP, TAPI, CASA is perhaps the likely future. Pakistan is likely to sign that, and if not, if it has not already been signed uh, before I left Pakistan. The news was that we are most likely um, to be uh, completing these deals. Nonetheless, these are not considered to be the best viable solution in the short term, primarily because of the security conditions uh, which are existing and also because of the uncertainty at the global strategic level in terms of the outplay as to how it will come. These are the entry and um, exit ports for Pakistan and they will also have an impact in terms of how Pakistan will play a role in terms of the transit, uh, uh, transit uh, capacity of the country for the future. In short, uh, we have 292 informal border crossings between Pakistan and Afghanistan and just to give a perspective, between the two formal uh, border crossings which we have between Pakistan and Afghanistan. From one post alone, we have 30,000 trucks which pass uh, in just one day alone. 
that means that the potential of trade between the two sides is high. Nonetheless, there would have to be serious structuring uh, carried out in terms of allowing for these uh, grid lines to connect to Pakistan. At this moment, the gas grid lines do not exist in Afghanistan. Some of them were built in the former Soviet Union time, but the question is whether or not they have the capacity uh, to remain alive uh, post-2014 uh, in the absence of uh, NATO forces or the U.S. forces uh, in the region will be of major concern. So what is the bigger picture? The bigger picture is, of course, the five questions which are linked, coal versus nuclear, nuclear versus um, other things, energy, are we resource poor, pollution, biodiversity, and last but not least, why renewables? Um, the survey says that there could be a number of energy sources which would be available, such as biomass, chemical processing, biological processing, and the list goes on. Nonetheless, uh, the real emphasis on renewables is basically because of the distribution of sources and also the fact that there is no price stability, no security stability, and it links you to other regions without having um, actual appreciation of the demands which you would be having locally. So this means there has to be a local supply and demand which has to be factored in. Monopolies are difficult to establish. Uh, that means that it will also impact in terms of how you will be negotiating. Uh, there are no intermediaries in the uh, domestic framework. Local economies and ecosystems can be managed if it is locally governed. The question will remain whether or not you have the appropriate technologies to harness these energies and whether or not you have sufficient experiences which will make the economies of scale viable. Pakistan has the experience of nuclear power reactors since 1966. Um, we have demonstrated reliable and responsible nuclear organizations um, and have been cooperating as, as the technical experts to the International Atomic Energy Agency as, um, as one of the few countries which are outside the NPT to provide technical expertise for safety and security on, on nuclear power. So we could play a positive role in the nuclear uh, renaissance. Uh, the average capacity which we're looking at is an increase to 5.4%. And that essentially means, just to recap, slightly different from Dr. Um, from our colleague from the United States. At this moment, um, Asia will be building around 49 new nuclear reactors and 100 more are planned. Out of these 149 in Asia, uh, the current nuclear power reactors, which are around 435, so you're talking about 500, uh, 600 nuclear reactors in the next 10 years, uh, which will be built. And what's most interesting is that there are only uh, nine uh, nuclear weapon states which are capable of having a full management of the nuclear fuel cycle and only four other countries outside which can provide this technical expertise. That means uh, the P5, the United States, UK, Russia, France, and China, and then uh, India, Pakistan, and Israel, and then the countries which are also having certain levels of efficiency in the nuclear fuel cycle will be South Korea, Japan, Italy, Sweden, uh, Brazil, Argentina, and South Africa. So these will be the countries which are capable of providing nuclear energy um, to the rest of the world. And uh, just to give you a perspective as to how many countries are, could be possible recipients, uh, it is estimated that around 187 countries um, could have access, could become recipients of nuclear energy in the future. But in terms of the planned sites, most of the planned sites will be in China, India, and Pakistan in terms of nuclear power, in addition to uh, some in the Asia Pacific. And last but not least, um, two new entrants uh, to the nuclear energy mix are perhaps not the traditional countries which we hold, will be Iran and, um, uh, and the countries in the Gulf which have set aside $3 trillion for 2018 for investing in nuclear energy. That means that it is important uh, to understand what would be the potential of actually providing alternative uh, designs and also having efficiency in that. Pakistan is planning and has inaugurated already, already two um, nuclear power reactors uh, with 1100 megawatts pressurized heavy water reactors, which will be built at a construction cost of $9.5 billion by 2019 in Karachi. They are supposed to provide 2,200 megawatts electricity uh, to the energy deficient uh, production sector of Pakistan. In terms of uh, the NTI index, which is the nuclear threat initiative um, agency or um, institute in the United States, Pakistan has got one of the most improved countries in terms of uh, having operational standards uh, for nuclear safety as well as security. 
We are a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency, World Association for Nuclear Operators, CANDU owners of groups, uh, owners group, and World Security Index, which is being forwarded for the nuclear power planning, which was perhaps not done in Europe, uh, which essentially had a different uh, matrix uh, in terms of defining security. In short, I'll just conclude uh, my presentation um, on the fact that uh, while nuclear is the next future, and it is the future because of the fact that you need alternative sources of energy, which are domestically within reach, uh, number two, can be linked to the global um, industry development, and number three, will also have survivability and cost, uh, but most importantly, price stability ensured in the production of the um, production of that energy sector to begin with. Nuclear provides that. It provides that because it provides stability in terms of uh, the operations which would be well within your reach once you've constructed and put in the initial capital costs. The question at this moment uh, with nuclear energy being available to the global energy mix lies within the framework of the nuclear suppliers group and also the technology, restra uh, technology restraint regimes which have not allowed for the industry to develop as a global industry. So if we are talking about energies and uh, economies of scale, it will be absolutely necessary that uh, we develop nuclear energy as a global um, energy industry. Uh, and for that, that would mean that you harness, for example, nuclear mining, which is coming out of Australia, Greenland, uh, which is now most likely to be producing around uh, uh, would be the fourth largest uh, producer of uh, nuclear uh, uh, mining or nuclear, nuclear fuel. And uh, in addition to the potential sources which would be agreed, which would be likely to be existing in Africa. So in short, if we are to potentially use nuclear energy both in Pakistan, uh, which we will be doing uh, irrespective of how it goes, uh, but in order for Pakistan to actually contribute to the global energy mix, it would be necessary that perhaps the framework is broadened. Uh, currently, there are negotiations which are going on between Pakistan, the United States, and other members of the nuclear suppliers group in order to see whether the base can be broadened and the energy mix uh, can actually offer an alternative source uh, of uh, electricity as well as industry um, to uh, the people uh, in the region. I will um, thank you all uh, for uh, listening on nuclear energy and so if there are any questions we'll be more than happy to